Data encapsulation is a process of binding, combining data and function into single unit. Inheritance is nothing but process of acquiring the properties from base class to derived class. When we come on overloading, there are two types, operator overloading and one more is function overloading. When we come on procedural programming, it mainly depends on the procedure, whereas in object oriented programming, it mainly depends on the object, not on procedure. Welcome back to one and all. Myself, Vasanta, lecturer in computer science, Vidyashram, Pre-University College, Temple of Excellence, Mysore. Today, we will start with a revision class on basic concept of hoops, that is object-oriented programming. In the annual exam, from this chapter, you may expect two questions. One is in part B, one question for two marks, and one more is in part D. One question for five marks, totally two questions, total weightage of this chapter is seven marks in the annual exam. Whereas five marks one question as well as two marks one question you may expect from this chapter. Whereas on this chapter the major synopsis which are the characteristics of object oriented programming, advantages of object oriented programming, disadvantages of object oriented programming as well as the application of hopes. Oops is nothing but object oriented programming. From this, you have to study the characteristics, advantage, disadvantage and application. Application is nothing but where exactly we are using this object oriented concept. Whereas for two marks, you may expect the question like write the fee A, write any two features of hoops or write any two advantages of hoops write any two disadvantages of hoops or write any two application of hoops like that you may expect the questions whereas briefly discuss classes and object otherwise you may want to get the question what is class and object also you can expect here whereas when we come on object it's a real time entity which having some characteristics and behavior but when we come on class it is a collection of objects which having same characteristics as well as behavior. Whereas a class is a way of grouping objects having similar characteristics. Once a class is defined, then any number of objects of that class are created here. Consider we have one mobile. On this mobile, we have datas as well as functions. Whereas this mobile can be called it as object. Whereas object is a real time entity. Here one mobile we have and here one more mobile. This is mobile 1 and this is mobile 2. Here also we have datas as well as functions. One more mobile we consider. This is mobile 3. Here we have datas as well as functions. The collection of these type of objects which having same behavior and characteristics then it can be called as class whereas class is a grouping of objects having similar characteristics having similar characteristics and behavior then it can be called as class whereas object is an collection of data members. In this we have data members and associated member functions as a single unit and each object is a real world entity here. It having real world entity, it having data as well as functions. Now is it clear? Next one mention different types of inheritance. Whereas inheritance is nothing but process of acquiring the properties from base class to derived class. That means father properties are transferring to son. That means the son acquires the properties of father here. It means that it is a process of acquiring or I can say taking the properties behavior from base class to derived class. When I come on types of inheritance, there we have single level inheritance. Multiple inheritance, multi-level inheritance, hierarchical inheritance and the last one is hybrid inheritance. Whereas here the properties of base class are transferred to son class, base to son or from father to son. Now it's clear. Next one, write a note on overloading. 
when we come on overloading there are two types operator overloading and one more is function overloading for example consider we have int add int comma int and one more function int add int comma int comma int one more function float add int comma float then what is the common thing here function name are same here number of arguments here two we have here also we have two but here both are integer here one is int and one more is float here we have three integers it means that when we come on function overloading function name are same but differ in number of arguments or data type of the argument whereas overloading allows objects to have different meaning depending upon the context there are two types operator as well as function overloading now is it clear next one mention different types of overloading that is operator overloading and one more is function overloading next for two marks you may expect the question write the disadvantages of object oriented programming that is here when you come on hoops software is not have set of standard here if i want to write a flow chart for this hoops concept it is very difficult and it does not have set of standard classes are overly generalized so these are the few disadvantages of object oriented programming next for five marks you may expect the question write the difference between procedural oriented programming and object oriented programming here when they come on procedural programming it mainly depends on the procedure whereas in object oriented programming it mainly depends on the object not on procedure whereas when they come on procedural programming this programming is based on the procedure logic whatever steps are given that step only you have to follow whereas here this programming is based on the object the final output what i want to reach it mainly depends on that object whereas in procedural this programming is used in conventional programming language such as pascal here for pascal we are using this whereas here this programming is used in the programming language such as c++ java there we are using hoops concept then for very small programs no other organizing principles is needed for this programming we are using procedural programming concept whereas here programs are usually written to solve real world problems next programs are using constructs such as sequence selection and iteration whereas here we can divide the main program to sub program and objects and we can able to solve here whereas in procedural also in procedural programming using terminologies such as variables data types structures and functions whereas here object programming using the terminologies such as objects classes instance variable as well as methods by this we can able to differentiate the procedural programming as well as object oriented programming this question you may expect for 5 marks next question explain the different characteristics of hoops whereas when the come on characteristics or features of hoops there are several features like class object first we have object then we have class whereas object is a collection of data items and associated member function as single unit and each object real world entity but when you come on classes it is a grouping of objects grouping of object having similar characteristics once the class is defined then any number of object of that class are created by using that and next feature is data abstraction whereas data abstraction is nothing but considering only the essential features without considering the background details for example i just want to ride the bike but i am not bothered which engine they used how exactly it is working like that i am not bothered that is data abstraction for example in the mobile also i just want to send a message from one mobile to another mobile but i am not bothered how exactly it is sending 
how much time it requires, how much space it requires, on which methodology it is sending, that we are not bothered. That is, data abstraction is nothing but considering the essential features or we can say representation of essential features of an object without including the background details is called as data abstraction. And the next one is data encapsulation. Whereas data encapsulation is a process of binding, combining data and function into single unit. A way of combining data and associated function into a single unit is called as data encapsulation. And here it will prevent direct access of data. In the mobile, if I want to send a contact from one mobile to another mobile, then with the help of functions only I can able to send. If data and functions are combined, then only I can able to process. Is it true? That is nothing but data encapsulation. Next one is inheritance. It's a process of acquiring or we can say forming a new class by using existing class. Consider here we have parent class. This parent class inherits the properties to son. It means that son takes the properties of parents. It's a process of forming a new class from an existing class it is known as inheritance. When you come on types of inheritance, single inheritance, multiple inheritance, multi-level inheritance, hierarchical inheritance and the last one is hybrid inheritance. These are the few types of inheritance. And the next one is polymorphism. When they come on the next features under polymorphism is the ability to behave more than one form. That is ability of a function to take multiple form is known as polymorphism. Next we will move on the next one that is overloading. Under this if you write any five features then that is enough in examination point of view. Because for five marks you may want to get this question write the features of hoops or characteristics of hoops. Under overloading, overloading allows objects to have different meaning depending upon the context. There are two types of overloading. One is operator overloading and one more is function overloading. And when we come on the next concept under features that is dynamic binding. When we come on binding, binding is a process of combining two sub program into one sub program. That is what binding here. Whereas dynamic binding is a process of connecting one program to another. Dynamic binding means code associated with a procedure call is known at the time of program execution routine. That is nothing but dynamic binding. Message passing. The processing of data in hoops is carried out by sending messages to an object is called as message passing. From one program to another program we can able to pass the messages. A message for an object is request for execution of procedure. Next we will move on the advantages of object oriented program. This is also five marks question. Because in the beginning itself I told you from this you have to study the features, advantage, disadvantages as well as application. Because each concept you may want to expect for 2 marks as well as 5 marks. Whereas here the programs are modularized based on the principle of classes and object. Here we are using the modularized methodology to solve any problem. Linking code and objects allows related objects to share common code and this reduces code duplication and code reusability. This is also one of the advantages of FOPS and easier to develop complex software. And here creation and implementation of hoops code is easy and reduces software development time also here. The concept of data abstraction separates object specification and object implementations. Whereas external non-member functions cannot access or modify the data due to data encapsulation. These are the few advantages of hoops. Next when you come on write the real 
life application of hoops that is object oriented programming under that it is used in computer graphic applications for graphic purpose we are using hoops concept and it is used in cad and cam software cad stands for computer aided designing purpose cam software means computer aided manufacturing purpose also we are using hoops concept and it is used in object oriented database database is a bit collection of related tables whereas here this hoops it is used in object oriented database concept and also it is user interface design such as windows there also we are using hoops concept as well as it is used in real time system then simulation and modeling and artificial intelligence and expert system these are the areas we are using this hoops concept then on this chapter you have studied regarding majorly the features feature is nothing but advantages feature characteristics advantages then disadvantages as well as application whereas when the come on features you have to explain regarding what do you mean by object what do you mean by class data encapsulation what do you mean by inheritance types of inheritance what do you mean by message passing these are the major concept that you have to explain whereas object is a real time entity whereas class is nothing but collection of related objects which having same behavior and characteristics then when you come on the next concept inheritance is the process of creating a new class by using existing class under that types single level multi level multiple hybrid hierarchical then message passing then data encapsulation combining of data and function to single unit then with that data abstraction data abstraction is nothing but considering the essential features without considering the background detail then message passing these are the few features then advantages modularity time consumption all those things you can write but when you come on disadvantages of hoops there if i want to write a flow chart for this hoops then it is very difficult then all real world problem cannot be solved classes are more generalized this are the few disadvantages of hoops then with that you have to remember the application of hoops whereas in the next session you will come to know regarding the class and object chapter under that you will study what do you mean by class how to declare a class or how to define an object how to write data members member function the general syntax of class under that what do you mean by data members as well as member function how to access and with that you will study regarding what do you mean by inside class definition outside class definition how to write the programs on inside class definition as well as outside class definition with that access specifier what do you mean by access specifier under that we have three types private public protected how to write the program by using these access specifiers with that how to create object regarding that you will come to know in the next session thank you for all of you